Well, uh, thank you very much for this um, uh, uh, web conference uh, by NALSAR students. Now, in the context of the new educational policy issued by the BJP government recently, now this uh, policy has many positive dimensions. It is certainly an improvement over the 1986 uh, educational policy uh, brought out by Rajiv Gandhi government at that time. But the positive uh, dimension is that um, it tries to club the entire school education from age three to 18 and uh, preschool to school to uh, up to 12th grade, uh, which has been broken into several parts earlier. And this whole intermediate, uh, uh, what, what they call, uh, you know, a 10 plus uh, two system, which is a bad system. And now it certainly needs to be abolished. Uh, the second one is that uh, clubbing uh, all the uh, school education and even at the village level, the kids uh, getting possibility of completing their 12th grade with uh, full high school stage, like what it is in many countries, is a very positive. The second positive thing is that uh, at the middle run, they are trying to open up uh, vocational uh, exposure, which I have been talking about teaching dignity of labor for all school children, uh, whatever could be their background, because some caste children and mostly urban children never have uh, interaction with uh, agriculture, production, cattle rearing, pot making, and fishing, and so on. Now, these things need to be taught to the kids for the both practical and theoretical level. This education policy talks about it. That's a fairly good thing to uh, get into new education. And they are also saying, the children will get breakfast in the uh, three to uh, eight uh, year grades. So, uh, and then possibly lunch. I think if that really comes into policy execution, that will be very good. The other point is that they are now making graduation into four year course which is uh, a useful thing in many ways. Earlier, certain degrees were three-year courses, certain degrees were four-year courses, and uh, arts, uh, natural sciences always remained in the three-year stream. Engineering and medicine were in the four-year and uh, sometimes five-year stream. So it is important to streamline and uh, put them into four year is uh, a reasonably good thing. Uh, now, what about the language part of it? My struggle for English medium from LKG to 12th has been for quite as a, quite a long struggle for almost 30 years now. I ever since uh, I wrote why I'm not a Hindu, that the language discrimination has been a major problem in the country. And also this three language formula is a very negative. Earlier the Hindi regions, uh, children were not struggling with three languages, Tamil Nadu, has uh, remained out of the three language formula, but uh, certain states which did not pro protest 
who are continuing with the three language. So uh, we need to oppose this across the nation and uh, say that English and one regional, whether call it mother tongue or not, or whatever is their language is enough because English will take care the national needs and the uh, regional languages or uh, even tribal languages will take care of their own uh, area problems. But by and large, regional languages have now come into state level administrations. So almost many tribal languages have disappeared. So therefore, uh, that so-called mother tongue regional language contradiction is uh, done away with. I think uh, there's not much a contradiction there. Now, what happens with this new definition? This, this is a very uh, nuanced and very uh, negative definition in a way that they said wherever possible, the school education from uh, grade one to fifth and eighth and beyond uh, should be in uh, regional language and mother tongue. But should that be in all schools, private and uh, central government uh, schools like Kendriya Vidyalayas, Navodaya schools, and Sainik schools and so on? Or they should be only in the regional state government uh, schools. Now this restriction is made compulsory for regional state government schools that you should teach only in regional language of the fifth or eighth or whatever. And that is totally detrimental because the, the class of education that this system introduced uh, right from 1947, continuing the colonial uh, process of uh, certain schools as state government schools or regional government, certain as national, and the national are in English and the regional or in uh, regional languages, is a very, very uh, destructive uh, education policy. Now, the reasons are fundamentally true. In this system that they evolved, what is known as Kasturi Rangan Committee, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, that is uh, age 3, uh, LKG, UKG, uh, one year before that, and then class one, class two is five year period. Then class three, class four, class five is three years, uh, is uh, primary uh, school uh, education. Uh, this is where they are saying up to here, there should be regional language. Now that would be fine if they say all schools, whether they are the missionary schools, whether they are the private corporate schools, whether they are Kendriya Vidyalayas, whether they are uh, uh, Sainik schools or whatever, they will be like that. And the English starts with class six in all schools and they can shift to English medium in all schools. That would be the common uh, platform of education. But uh, their own clarification say, no, we are not uh, asking the private sector to go to complete uh, regional language mediums because um, uh, the right to education and the right to choice uh, has its own implication. So my feeling is um, one of the best uh, policies that in the recent past evolved 
is by Andhra Pradesh uh, government, by the present Chief Minister, Mr. Jagan Mohan Reddy, who said that uh, all children will have English medium with one regional language compulsory for all schools that exist in Andhra Pradesh. They may be private, they may be government, they may be Sainik schools or whatever, they will have to teach one Telugu subject compulsory from class 1 to 12th. So that's fairly good uh, system. And uh, the books, the financial allocations, all these things, state is trying to spend more on uh, primary level education, improvement of infrastructure. Uh, now this is uh, given the situation, uh, if the RSS, uh, certain sections of uh, BJP, and even in Congress and other parties, there was this conservative mother tongue uh, forces, which uh, have been very hypocritic. When it comes to their own children, they sent to private schools, English medium compulsory. In many cases, um, those private schools teach French, German, uh, uh, you know, Russian and so on, but uh, certainly not uh, regional languages. So they send their children to such schools and they internationalize their education process. These are the kids who go into civil service, foreign services, I and English medium, English media and national media, and uh, universities like Delhi, JNU, Hyderabad, IITs, IIMs, uh, all of them, and uh, schools like uh, law schools, national law schools, all of them, cater to English medium crowd. And the regional language kids really suffer in this. My strong uh, appeal to youth in all universities is that you have to oppose this policy. Because uh, let us not again in future do great disservice to our rural uh, historically illiterate Shudra, OBC, Dalit, Adivasi children, so that they can uh, survive as inferior, both in language and exposure of education, in the higher education, and in the services where they join, uh, whatever service they And then, See, English is no longer colonial language. When our ruling classes have gone English, our industry, software and hardware, and our business communities, our high and political operators, there may be some politicians who can't speak good English, but the whole system uh, is so much internationalized. And um, if we do not make uh, the school education platform uh, same language, same course content, and same infrastructural standards, these are three areas where we need to focus. So new education policy address certain issues. But certainly, this is one of the major problems. Secondly, you know, this three language formula, why I oppose? Why even Tamil Nadu is opposing? When certain states in the north, the children were comfortably learning two languages, English and Hindi with all their uh, weak infrastructure, if you look at Delhi, 
or Mumbai or Ahmedabad. Uh, they have been comfortably going into many national services. But certain states which force Hindi on their children, I have my own experience. I didn't like Hindi at all. And uh, we were force fed that language and it's very, very bad to struggle with it. So uh, the three language formula has to be uh, reviewed. Now, as a compromise, they said, uh, okay, if you don't want Hindi, you learn some other language from South or whatever you want. That means Tamil Nadu children should learn Kannada or Telugu or Malayalam, Marathi, Bengali or whatever. But even that, I think, is a redundant, uh, uh, a redundant uh, kind of uh, laboring at a very young age where the child would uh, seriously learn better things from English and uh, regional language. So these are the areas I think uh, the young people should reflect. Uh, I have been watching right from 1990, and particularly ever since uh, 1995, the reservation implementation of Mandal and SCST reservation, even 1947 onwards. One of the main problems of inferiority complex of the rural kids who come both in the reservation and also in the non-reservation, if they get uh, into higher education, English language is the problem. It is this that makes them more inferior and dropouts and uh, suicides, uh, so on and so forth. So I think uh, this has to change. A lot of uh, social media writing about this injustice of language. Now, there are guys who keep on asking, okay, you are asking for same medium, same content, same um, infrastructure, uh, but then what do you do about reservation? See, this, this question of caste and reservation is to resolve these historical handicaps of not allowing Sanskrit to be studied for centuries, millennia. And later on, even when Persian came as the Muslim language, and they were ruling even in the Mughal period, the agrarian feudal classes, leave alone poor, were not allowed to get into even Persian education. There were no availability of schools. They couldn't send to urban centers. They were trying to uh, control their economies through feudalism within the region. So even the most uh, agriculturally uh, so-called powerful yards, Gujars, Patels, Kamas, Reddies, Lingayat, Waklinga, Maratha, in Bengal region, Sudra, Namshudra, they are not there in uh, high-end education now. If you take English writers, uh, it is all five communities, Brahmins, Banyas, Kayasthas, Katris, and some Kshatriyas who are recently entering into high-end English education, and also foreign education. Earlier in the nationalist period, mainly Brahmins and Banyas went abroad and studied. Stay even from Raja Ramon Rai days down to Gandhi Nehru, that was the trend. Hardly any Shudras went abroad and studied. Though people like Sardar Patel did, but they couldn't really grasp what is happening. Uh, even Patel did not write much. 
So except Ambedkar, who luckily had gone to Colombia with a great struggle and uh, with some uh, kingly support, nobody could uh, must master uh, English language and write in English. If they don't write in English, it doesn't reach anywhere now. People don't understand the uh, sentimentalized mother tongues. Because these are the guys who live in the local domains and uh, sentimentalized spiritual life superstitions. But that is all uh, not going to remain forever once the education system comes to same language, same content, more or less same uh, infrastructure. So in this new education policy, this is the major problem and three languages. Well, the government is saying they will spend 6% uh, GDP on education. They should spend more, but even that is okay if they spend to start with, because even that much is not uh, spent as of now. As of now, the national budget seems to be around 2.5, less than 3. So if they spend 6%, it will be a substantial improvement. And we have a massive child population. Uh, several crores will be in the schools, feeding them, attending. So, you know, my last point is we should uh, compete in education with China, not with Pakistan or Bangladesh or other neighboring Muslim countries, which also have a very bad education system. Uh, I don't accept with the Madarsa system or their um, language policies. And so if you compete with um, uh, more underdeveloped, more backward, and theological countries, theocratic states, then you will go back from here to their status. So if you compete with neighbors, it should be China. China has uh, increased its productivity. Uh, its uh, GDP is three times more than us. And now the competition of lands, borders. Well, we should not leave a single uh, inch of land to Chinese or Pakistanis and whoever is the neighbor, because it, the land of this country is made what it is with sweat and blood of the farmers, the peasants, the cattle rearers, not uh, the educated classes who made this land. From the days of uh, the builders of uh, Arappa civilization, in my view, Arappa himself was a human being, whether that name is very common in South. So production, agriculture, cattle economy, uh, inclusive food culture, meat, milk, vegetable, uh, all that was part of us till the Aryan migration, what uh, Tony Joseph calls the third migration, and the writing of uh, Rigvedic texts, and later on emergence of uh, Jainism, vegetarianism, so on and so forth. <clears throat> now with these values, so we should teach in our schools inclusive food culture, dignity of labor, production as the key, even among children, because China is teaching massive uh, dignity of labor from uh, third, fourth grade itself. And uh, this food cultural, uh, uh, you know, superstition and uh, confining to certain community values, certain uh, Jains, for example, as a religion, 
vegetarian. See, agrarian economy, production, tilling of the land, animal grazing, uh, you know, Corona has proved that people should eat good food and all varieties. Uh, just so the nation cannot survive with mere vegetables and uh, uh, the milk production of this nation is very little now. So therefore, my point is, we should teach all community children plural food cultural values. If their parents don't allow them to eat, that's a different thing. But school should be open, open to multi cuisine multi labor, multi skill, and uh, English on par with the best of uh, education system like UK and US and so on. So that alone will make us competent. Our uh, so when the government is saying Atman er Barbarat, I mean self reliance, how does it come? You have to have healthy people, you have to have very efficient brains and uh, uh, food eating should be very, very uh, important in the childhood stages. So some of the government saying we don't give eggs to children, then they will become victims of uh, diseases like Corona because their nutrition levels are very bad, it will be very bad. So um, this should be my, now the foundations are laid in the school education. If in the next uh, 20 years, all our girls and boys in the villages come out of grade 12 with reasonably good English and reasonably good regional language base with scientific teaching and exposure, this modern internet, TV and communication system, I think every young boy and girl, or whatever the job they do, agriculture or industry or service sector, they'll be better equipped citizens. And um, so the university should address these questions without inhibitions, without looking at their own family restricted cultures. Families restrict children. Rural areas, they have very backward looking, uh, superstition, urban areas, uh, very conservative values. So this don't work. Then uh, every likelihood that China will walk over our economy in the next uh, few decades or any other European American. We should not allow that and we should produce best brains to solve multiple problems that we have. Thank you for giving me this. Oh, thank you so much. We'll now take questions. Yeah. Yeah, let them ask. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, there is a box, uh, Q&A. No, you know, what you do, either you ask them to uh, 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 speak on uh, their own mic, uh, unmuting it, or they should uh, write the questions to you, you ask me if there is that scope. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Hello, sir. There is a question. Yeah. Uh, I'll read it out. What mm -hmm. do you think about the national education policy allowing foreign universities to be set up in India? Well, uh, the BJP has a very contradicting position as far as uh, higher education is concerned. On the one hand, it talks about 
self reliance so everything should be neat made within india an indian mind has to become competent to global levels with the indian education indian product indian uh, uh, thought and whatever and the other they open up to the western uh, educational institutions privatization of uh, railways airlines so if they are talking about private self reliance that would not be a self reliance now i don't know how do they handle the school education if the foreign schools start they teach only in english nobody will teach in mother tongue nobody will join them so um, congress had this kind of open policy also but it is increasing bjp is allowing more and more uh, foreign universities foreign schools to come so uh, this is a very very contradictory and uh, we need to debate write a lot on the question of contradiction how, how does it uh, fulfill the self reliance situation so i think so uh yes sir uh so second question don't you think that the private schools should be mandated to teach in regional languages till at least grade 5 replacing exclusive access to english with english universalism doesn't solve the problem of english hate you know my feeling is uh, that will weaken all the children uh see it is uh, it is clearly established the formative brain and the linguistic uh, facility of thinking in a language and writing and speaking uh, gets formed by the time the kid is uh, in the fifth grade that's so you can see the difference of speaking english in english medium schools and uh, the children who start learning english from 6th grade onwards and so on so in my view all of them should learn two languages parallelly right from lkg onwards children can learn a b c d and in telugu i e or in the i e whatever right from lkg such as letter learning and then ukg some reading class 1 class 2 class 3 like that the two languages and as you go up you can improve english that's reading more and rational thinking and uh, the regional language should follow as one subject with a uh, local needs in reading writing and so some of them can specialize later a telugu language experts and so on or whatever language so but uh putting uh, all schools in regional languages of the fifth is uh, not a good idea okay so uh, there's another question how ap government decision to make telugu compulsory is beneficial isn't this an arbitrary move no they are saying since there is a mother tongue uh, stress and then courts are coming in the way and there is a need for regional language and regional market uh, necessity for everybody who is studying in english medium and government school to to handle at that state level so making telugu compulsory from 
class 1 to grade 12 make them expert in Telugu as well as English as far as language courses. Other science, engineering, technologies, and higher education directors. So that okay. will come later, but uh, uh, that's fine. I mean, that uh, keeps uh, putting what I call working on two leg education, English and one regional language. That can be a very, very comfortable way of doing it. Uh, another question. To what extent do you think the new NEP understands language more than just a medium of communication? Is a shift to regional languages enough or should that just be the first step as language is more often than not just a medium of communication? It's also how power structures align in a society. See, power structure change. Uh, my vision is that if all children from tribal areas to Delhi to Gali, if they all can communicate in English, read a common text in English, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari to Calcutta to uh, West Coast, then there is a common vision, the reading habits, of general books will increase. Book writers can become old time professionals. So lots of uh, new dimensions will emerge. At the same time, handling of the regional issues in the regional land. So power structures will not remain in the same form forever. And language is not the only thing that decides power structures the economic factor, the exploitation, nature of capitalism, nature of market, all those uh, depend. So therefore, uh, uh, it is not just one language that decides. Uh, another question says, if Hmm. Okay. Is it possible to provide qualification in English given the poor infrastructure of primary education? Second, they don't understand better in their mother tongue than English, non native language. What's your take on this? Hey, that is a, that's a very false notion. Uh, there is nothing like uh, uh, embedded mother tongue notion in the child, uh, if you give the basic uh, uh, inputs through oral and uh, text-based practice from uh, age four and five, they can learn two languages quite comfortably, even though the parental language at home could be one of the languages. It doesn't make much difference. Now, this uh, August theory that uh, creative thinking is in uh, mother tongue, then all those who were writing about this nonsense should be sending their children into so-called mother tongue schools. All these fellows are uh, English uh, writers. Their children are put in English medium. So their uh, home language is uh, either Hindi, Marathi, Bengali, uh, what, what, what does that indicate? If you are a child, that means you, by push, putting your children in English medium, you made them dull or what? And why are you putting them? So, but you benefited the, uh, uh, we, we know where your children are, having studied in uh, English medium schools. So there will be problem in villages, infrastructure, teachers, but that will be overcome over a period of time. The child learns many times in spite of bad teachers. 
in spite of uh, odd times and uh, most of us came from that background. When I was studying, uh, there were no teachers at all. They used to give us some books and ask us to practice reading under the trees. And uh, I studied up to 11th class in Telugu medium from 6th onwards one English. So it was a great difficult struggle to learn English later. But all cannot do that. So that's not correct. And you don't forget when we got freedom, we had no mathematics teachers. We had no English teachers. But schools were open. And children were admitted. And they learned something. How did they do it? Well, there were some written books and some guidance, vague, not so expert guidance. But children, some of them picked up much better than better school children. So there is a child talent to overcome hurdles. And once you give that to large numbers, uh, if you educate hundreds, tens will come with bright color. So I, I am confident that uh, the rural areas will do much better. And uh, the urban uh, children who are uh, uh, brought up like protected birds, they will suffer a lot uh, once the rural mass comes into English media. With all the uh, lack of infrastructure, teachers, and so on. Because you are dealing with crores there. And uh, millions will emerge bright. And thousands will overtake the urban uh, people. Because production relations teach them many things with the national, international, which is not possible for our urban children. All these university structures will change. Once English is available in the rural areas, uh, sir, there seems to be a counter to to your explanation. Uh, isn't that a weak ad hominem argument? A lot of genuine regional language activists make a lot of sacrifices to fight against linguistic hegemony. So what sacrifices? Why are they making that sacrifice? All these fellows who are so-called making sacrifices, they send their children to English medium. Uh, why are they doing that? If they are, say for example, the same nonsense was talked uh, earlier that we should not give up Sanskrit. But the same people who were controlling Sanskrit in the spiritual domain at home, they went out of Sanskrit. And the same people got into Persian education when government was running in Persian. The same people got into English education. Those who are abusing Macaulay are the most uh, beneficial, beneficiaries of Macaulay, government English medium school education in the colonial period. So these are all facades. These are all hypocrites. Just rubbish them. If they are so concerned, let them put their children in regional language private schools. Who is saying no? If their children can learn much better in regional language, let them establish private schools as they are doing English medium schools. Let there be best Telugu private schools. They can educate them. Who is saying no? They have the right. Uh what is your opinion on unified education system in India? Like combining state, CBSC, and ICSC structure, same schools for poor and rich, and no private and public education institutions, only one form of education from public institutions. I have been uh, fully fighting for that. Abolition of private schools and uniform syllabus. They can have one subject somewhere on the regional culture, economy, uh, in, in a particular state, that can be allowed by the central board of syllabus. 
am for that and uh, i have been asking for that for in all my writings you can go and see on google kanchayile shepherd or kanchayile on english medium and common syllabus there is my book called teaching dignity of labor its actual title is turning the pot tilling the land uh dignity of labor in our times it is in english with illustrations you all read that i want such content should go into every syllabus across the country yeah so uh, there is a counter that says tamil activists who resist hindi imposition don't send their children to english medium schools does the speaker have any empirical evidence to back his accusations no i don't think today any tamil guy is sending their children to pure tamil medium because tamil nadu has parallel two languages now that is one of the reasons why tamil nadu school educational competitive level or for a year in uh, central services in the foreign uh, institutions all these uh, uh, tamil brahmins who migrated to uh, america including uh, kamala harris grandfather and mother and so on or uh, sundar pichai and uh, noi of uh, coca cola all of them were uh, beneficiaries of tamil education system how can say they that uh, uh, they send only to tamil medium that's not true even the dalit competitiveness there is far better in any uh, any uh, institution you can see that now that's not correct um a lot of brahmanical concepts are being introduced within different subjects by our state government one such move is introduction of vedic maths and mathematics for primary and high school students what do you have to say, say about this extensive brahmanization of curriculum not just in theoretical subjects but also in practical ones see there are two mathematics in pre vedic period there was a shepherd mathematics from uh, harappa city building days do they mean to say that we don't have counting and how did the shepherds account uh, the sheep and goat because the earliest uh, domesticated economy was goat economy you read uh, tony josephs early indians so if for the shepherd mathematics what i call the production mathematics from the rural you know grain counting to cattle counting so what what do they call vedic mathematics is not at all proved now if they want to have some a class on vedic mathematics if there is something there i have no problem but there is nothing concrete like that mathematics is a part of a uh, agrarian animal economic evolution it is mathematics did not uh, come out of books just like that so the tragedy is these people don't know that uh, before rigveda was written 1500 years before lot of economy and urban systems were there during the vedic period it was only pastoralism again we went backwards so what is vedic economics if there is something substantial we can examine and read but uh, they will fail in that uh, as i said you know we have to match with chinese not with pakistan Oh, 
do you think the government's idea to impart more skill based education result in more job creation or imposition in scheduled areas often such skill imparting exercise results in modern industrial practices being imposed on communities in scheduled areas where do we draw the line in terms of employability no see employability comes from establishment of standard good english medium schools in tribal areas so the tribal population gets mixed up and migrations will happen in a huge way i don't want tribal people to live in forest land but nothing else will change their life except english medium education and with same standard same syllabus and so on. so once that happens the whole population demography changes and tribalism gets completely dismantled it should be uh nobody should be in the forest and nobody should be in the uh high end urban or whatever so it is education that does this okay so tribals must ask for only english medium and standard universal education not uh, small or regional tribal language education you can't get anything with that employability comes with the standards with competitiveness and i think tribal children will compete much better once they get into national stream of english medium because their brain potential is stronger and exposure to nature is strong they will do much much more better anyway thank you uh, uh, i can't take many questions now i have uh, some more one more meeting yes so thank you yeah all the best take care